On April 12, 2025, China delivered a decisive and irreversible message to the global semiconductor industry. The era of dependence was over. In one sweeping move, Beijing formally terminated all procurement contracts for ASML's lithography systems and ceased all TSMC-based chip orders across state-length entities. What analysts at Bernstein immediately called the most consequential shift in semiconductor sovereignty since 1987 was not a bluff, not a bargaining chip. It was the culmination of a five-year sprint toward technological autonomy that few in the West had believed possible. Behind the scenes, China's domestic champion Smike had quietly doubled its deep ultraviolet DUV production capacity, now fabricating over 300,000 wafers per month, twice its 2023 levels, according to IC Insights. For ASML, the implications were immediate and brutal. With EUV systems accounting for nearly 70% of its gross margin, the company faced a sudden vacuum in one of its most strategic markets. UBS analysts reported a 12% plunge in advanced tool bookings from Asia in the first quarter alone. TSMC, on the other hand, faced a different kind of reckoning. Its $100 billion zero cents U.S. expansion project, once hailed by Washington as a geopolitical win, had morphed into a strategic constraint. With Beijing blacklisting its nodes above 7 nanometers, TSMC found itself caught in the crossfire of a technological cold war boxed out of the world's second-largest chip market by a former partner, now fully intent on going its own way. But the real shock wasn't in the cutting of ties. It was in what China had already built. When Washington blacklisted Huawei in 2020, slamming the door shut on access to ASML's EUV systems and TSMC's advanced nodes, it inadvertently triggered what Credit Suisse would later describe as the most expensive forced innovation cycle in the history of modern technology. Rather than collapse, China adapted aggressively, systematically, and with staggering speed. Within five years, Huawei and SMIC had produced the Mate 70 Pro, powered by a domestically fabricated 7nm chip made without a single foreign tool or imported wafer. Built using Duve and Self-Colitis quadruple patterning, the chip fell just 17% short of Apple's A17 Pro in transistor density, yet held its own in AI inference performance benchmarks, then came the Ascend 910C Hu Huawei's bold answer to NVIDIA's H100. Volume production started in March 2025 at the Qingpu facility. Within weeks, over 30 domestic AI companies had signed supply agreements. This wasn't a workaround. It wasn't a copycat effort. It was a complete inversion of the global tech hierarchy. And if China's next steps play out, it won't just be catching up, it could be rewriting the rules of the race entirely. SMIC's quiet push toward 3M nodes without access to EUV, has already begun to fracture the expert consensus. Some, like Trendforce, argue that without EUV, the complexity of multi-patterning makes 3NM yields commercially unviable. But a leaked prototype wafer from April 2025, analyzed by teardown specialists, showed critical dimensions as small as 34NM gates putting it just within 3NM territory through an aggressive quadruple patterning approach. The costs are extreme. The time to produce a wafer nearly triples. Yields hover around 40%. But that's not the point. Beijing isn't playing by capitalist rules. It doesn't need efficiency. It needs control. It needs enough. With state subsidies softening the financial blow and domestic demand guaranteed by AI and military contracts, SMIC's model isn't economic in traditional terms, but geopolitically, it's exact. Morgan Stanley's March report was blunt. China no longer needs to match TSMC's cost structures. It only needs to scale a minimally viable alternative faster than the West can sanction it. And so far, it is. NVIDIA's forced retreat from the Chinese AI market in late 2024 thanks to U.S. bans on its H100, H20, and B200 chips created a $7 billion zero-cents vacuum, according to Reuters. Huawei moved fast. In May 2025, it launched mass shipments of the Ascend 910C, an innovative 2.5D design fusing two 910B dies to rival NVIDIA's H100 performance at a fraction of the cost, 75% of the power, 55% of the price. 
The first shipment sold out in 11 days to state-backed cloud firms, according to China AI Tech Talk. But perhaps more crucially, SMIC's DUV-based production line using SAQP, self-aligned quadruple patterning, saw yields rise to 56% by mid-May, up from just 31% in January. This wasn't parity, it was strategic asymmetry. Huawei doesn't have to beat NVIDIA across every metric, it just has to deliver chips that are good enough and ready on time. By Q2 2025, over 82% of components used in sub-10 nm Chinese chip production were domestically sourced, per the China Semiconductor Industry Association. SMIC's new mega fab in Shenzhen, built in just 16 months, now churns out 45,000 wafers monthly in the 5 nm to 7 nm range. Meanwhile, Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment, SMEE, completed its first production run of 28 MEG-capable steppers in March 2025, and is already targeting 14 DEM by late 2026. The pieces are falling into place. Fast. On the human capital front, over 1,500 engineers from TSMC and UMC have been lured to mainland firms since 2022, with offers reportedly averaging 2.3 times their prior salaries, according to Nikkei Asia. Beijing's $47 billion zero-cents semiconductor fund restructured in 2024 under the oversight of the state-owned Assets Supervision and Administration Commission, SASAC, is no longer chasing international partnerships. It's building a vertically integrated ecosystem piece by piece, function by function, until no single choke point can be leveraged against it. While ASML remains entangled in its reliance on Carl Zeiss Optics and German Photon, China is converging toward technological self-sufficiency at every layer of the semiconductor stack. What we're witnessing isn't just a decoupling, it's a redrawing of the map. The scaffolding of Western control, export bans, tool restrictions, node blacklists, is starting to look like a relic. China may not be faster, cheaper, or cleaner, but it is relentless, and now it's ready. Would you like this reformatted into a video script, news article, or voiceover family narration? If things keep moving the way they are, the biggest threat to Western dominance in semiconductors won't be spying or data leaks. It'll be something far simpler and far more dangerous, obsolescence. In February 2025, an internal engineering blueprint leaked from China's state key laboratory of laser technology sent shockwave through the semiconductor world. The document detailed a prototype for an entirely new kind of EUV light source, an LDP, or laser-induced discharge plasma system. The claim? A staggering 90% reduction in power consumption compared to ASML's existing LPP, or laser-produced plasma units. According to the e-Journal of Photonics, this next-gen system ditches the tin droplet lasers that ASML relies on, where less than 0.1% of the energy turns into usable EUV, and instead uses a two-stage setup. First, a low-power ionizing laser, then a high-current electrical discharge. Engineers in Beijing say lab results produced EUV light at the critical 13.5 nm wavelength, with efficiencies as high as 8%, up to 8 times what the West has achieved. If it scales, that changes everything. It would make ASML's flagship EUV machines 170 million euro zero cents behemoths that devour more than a megawatt of electricity each unnecessary. One leak changed the global conversation. The question is no longer what if, but how soon. ASML's current EUV dominance is built on machinery that burns staggering amounts of energy. A single full-capacity EUV production line draws enough power each month to supply 1,200 U.S. homes, according to the International Energy Agency. Its LPP process requires 50,000 laser blasts per second and an army of heat management systems along with mirror rays so sensitive they degrade after just 20,000 wafers. By contrast, China's proposed LDP system skips tin vaporization entirely. It uses electrical discharge to create a stable plasma and with almost no thermal burden. According to Qin Wei, a former Zeiss SMT engineer now consulting in Asia, if they get this to industrial scale, it breaks the trade-off we've lived with for 15 years, Precision at the cost of energy. ASML hasn't officially responded, but in April it quietly slashed its 2025 EUV shipment forecasts by 
citing regional procurement uncertainties. Behind the scenes, they've already begun redesigning their entire light source architecture. The pressure is no longer theoretical. TSMC's Arizona Fab, a $6 billion zero cents project backed by U.S. subsidies and national security clauses, is now bound to Washington's geopolitical strategy. It's not just expensive, it's exposed. ASML, with optics relying on German exports and photonics from Japan, is caught between Dutch regulators, U.S. foreign policy, and a declining Asian customer base. In the first quarter of 2025, TSMC's foundry utilization dropped to 76%, down from 89% the previous year, largely due to canceled Chinese contracts, according to Trendforce. Meanwhile, Canon's FPA 1000 200 NZ2 CAD UV lithography system, not tied to Western controls, has begun filling the vacuum. In just five months, 27 units were shipped to Southeast Asia. ASMLers and out, but its moat is shrinking. The dominance it once held is no longer protected by technology alone. It's now exposed to politics, alternatives, and attrition. The more alarming truth isn't that China has stepped away from the table. It's that others are starting to fill the seats it left behind. Still, building a new EUV light source is one thing. Running it at scale, 30,000 wafers per month with 95% uptime, is another beast entirely. China still faces massive technical barriers. Key among them, ultra-reflective mirrors composed of over 100 molybdenum silicon layers that demand a defect rate of less than 0.2 nanometers. As of April 2025, Tokyo Electron executives told Nikkei Asia that China's metrology tools still failed to achieve sub angstrom accuracy for EUV mask alignment. Their domestic photoresist manufacturers like Diwa Chemical haven't yet produced EUV-compatible polymers capable of withstanding mass production tolerances. And even if the LDP source holds, synchronizing throughput between etching, deposition, and inspection remains an open integration challenge. Yet intent is unmistakable. Beijing just committed 9 billion, 300 million, zero cents across four LDP pilot lines. According to Lisa Chow, tech strategist at Bernstein, China now has proof of concept. What it lacks is repeatability under pressure. But that's a gap that can close. Quickly, just ask anyone who said Huawei could never build a 7M chip. So let's stop pretending this is hypothetical. If China breaks free of ASML and TSMC and builds something smaller, cheaper, and exponentially more efficient, what happens to the global technology stack? The truth is, Every AI supercluster, every quantum simulator, every battlefield targeting system over the next decade will hinge on one thing. Who controls the light? For now, ASML owns that light. But if Beijing just cracked the bulb, we may be looking at the beginning of an entirely new power structure. That blueprint was only the first fracture. The next phase? It's already being built, quietly, behind sealed doors. So here's the real question. If China renders EUV obsolete, who gets to rewrite the rules of wealth, war, and global influence? Let us know what you think in the comments, and if you want more deep dives into the front lines of tech and geopolitics, like and subscribe. This story's just getting started.